we are celebrating the International Men's Wellness Week between June 15th and June 21st. We have with us Dr. Brinda Sitaram, who is the Group Director of Psycho-Oncology at HCG. Welcome ma'am. Thank you. Uh, so at the outset, would you please tell us uh, why we celebrate the International Men's Week? Yeah, International Men's Week is celebrated, uh, particularly this year, it is from June 15 to June 21st, like you mentioned. It usually precedes Father's Day. And uh, the reason why this movement was started was mainly to sensitize uh, men and uh, boys about, uh, you know, health. And when we talk about health, health in its totality of physical as well as, you know, the mental health as it were. Mm -hmm and uh, mainly to create awareness and make sure that men kind of you know really work on looking after their uh, health and yeah. well-being. So why is this emphasis on men's health? Interesting while uh, men come across as being physically very fit very strong um, they're actually health wise very weak. They have vulnerability for several diseases when compared to female uh, population. Mm -hmm. Diabetes is very high, the risk for cardiac uh, problems is very high. Lung diseases are very well known. And in the oncology space, of course, you know, lung cancer, colon cancer, bladder cancer. And of course, some cancers are unique to men, such as prostate cancer, testicular cancer, penile cancers, and uh, so on. And in this endless list, COVID also has found a place, you know. The recent uh, data seem to suggest that when compared to female population, men are more vulnerable to, you know, the COVID uh, as it were. And when we talk about um, the health per se, it's also the mental health. And again, you'll be very surprised to know about these facts that men have the frequency of depression and suicide rate is more in men when compared to women. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the suicide risk is three times more when compared to the female population. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about this again, the surprising bit is that while women attempt suicide, men culminate into, you know, success. The success rate of suicide is very high in men, three times more. So therefore, the vulnerability is very, very high. And uh, that is the reason why when we talk about this particular, uh, you know, movement, it is to sensitize them about various physical as well as the emotional, you know, well-being. That's very interesting to know. Uh, what do you think makes men more vulnerable? Uh, well, again, there are there is no single answer to this. It's a whole host of, uh, you know, factors. In fact, an interplay of uh, several uh, factors, the biological, they say the chromosomal, uh, variation itself, hormones, um, then the social factors, you know, they men don't really create so much support system around themselves, mm. they don't create a network of relationships and uh, so on. Then the occupational stress, the stress in the workforce um, and the behavioral factors because they engage in, you know, altered lifestyles such as, you know, smoking, alcohol and, uh, you know, the tobacco use is very rampant again in the male population as it were. So they also engage in a lot of risky behavior such as aggression, violence and um, so on. All of this put together is what really makes them more vulnerable when compared to the female population. Uh, also, do you think that men and women react differently to illness? Interesting, you know, men are from Mars and women are from Venus. <laughs> I think in the 1990s, you know, this whole conversation really started. And I think later data seemed to suggest that no, not really so. Uh, there was a lot of debate around uh, this particular issue. But I think for now, the debate seems to kind of hinge on the seed and soil, as it were, the nature nurture uh, theory. And uh, to a large extent, it is, you know, the social and the cultural conditioning, uh, as it were. But whatever it is, yes, they do react and deal with both wellness as well as their illness very differently. In wellness, they seem to be in complete control. They think that, you know, they're kind of not vulnerable to anything. But in illness, you can see them completely, you know, losing themselves. 
um, they feel out of sorts, they feel out of control, but not willing to admit what they are going through because again, society expects them to kind of, you know, come across as being very strong and completely in control. Whereas women on the contrary are uh, seen to be emotionally quote unquote very weak. But the truth of the matter is, you know, they are very resilient mm -hmm. because we talk, we ventilate, we kind of, you know, resolve our issues and problems by engaging in a lot of discussion and uh, uh, so on. Including the wiring seems to be very different. There are lots of MRI radiological studies that show that, uh, you know, the wiring itself is very different and that's the reason why we react or cope with context very differently. Again in men when we were, I mean, was talking about the way they cope, invariably their coping would be, you know, because while they suppress all the emotions, they engage in lifestyles that are completely faulty. Maladaptive coping methods as it were, you know, taking to smoking, alcohol and so on, to kind of run away from the problem. So, so to sum it up, uh, what would you recommend that men do during this International Men's Week? Like I started off by saying, I think first of all is to be very aware of the fact that one, you are very vulnerable to several uh, illnesses, both mental as well as physical. Yeah. So that awareness itself should be a starting point to start kind of engaging in healthy behaviors. Yeah. One, fundamentally to have a regular health checkup. Two, you know, to exercise and make sure you are physically very fit. Yeah. Three, you know, dietary habits should be altered. Four, most important, like I talked about mental health, I think, you know, ventilate, talk about your problems. If you don't want to do it with your loved and dear ones, at least, you know, seek professional assistance to resolve some of the emotional difficulties that you may be going through. And that is where my appeal to the family would be that please make sure your primary care provider, mainly your male family member, be kind of, you know, Make sure that he is kept healthy by, like I was saying, you know, the Father's Day is coming on 21st. Make sure you give him your father a health coupon so that he can go for a routine uh, health checkup and so on. So I think that is a fundamental uh, thing. You know, this whole movement is only to make sure that you are well preserved both mentally as well as physically. Therefore, make sure that you kind of, you know, go through certain health checkups and engage in healthy behaviors. Thank you so much for your wonderful insights uh, into men's wellness ma'am. I'm you. sure the audience found it very informative. If you want to write to us, please write, uh, post your questions in the comment box and we will get back to you with the answers. Thank you so much.